Hi there. This video, uh, we're going to quickly look at how to solve a linear system. A linear system is when you have two equations like the following right here, and we're supposed to solve them, which means find out what x and y is. And uh, we're going to do that in three different ways. Um, the first way is probably my favorite way because it's more visual. We're going to do it by graphing. We're going to do that quite quickly. Then we're going to look at how to solve these using something called elimination. And then another final way called substitution. And each of these ways is useful. When you do the last two ways, elimination and substitution, you do not need graph paper for that. Okay? That's the bonus of those ways. However, we're going to quickly start by solving these, by graphing these two equations. Um, there are other videos that show how to get y all by itself. I have those videos and um, I'm going to try to get these equations into a form that looks like this. Okay, into a form that has, it's called the slope intercept form. And again, those videos um, are very useful that I have on those in case that seems confusing to you because my goal here is not to confuse you. All right, I'm going to quickly solve for y for both of these. So here we go. I'm moving this x over to the other side, which changes the sign. There is that equation. And this one here, let's, let's get y all by itself. Let's bring this 2x over to the other side. So it's going to be negative 2x. The 3 is already there, so it stays as a positive 3. Now to graph this, remember, always start with the y-intercept. Oh my goodness, this is still a plus 5. There we go. I don't know why I changed the sign there. If you noticed that earlier, good for you, but luckily I caught it. Okay, so we're going to start at the y-intercept, and then we look at the slope of this line here, and it's invisible. There's an invisible 1 here. There's also an, an invisible denominator of 1, so it means going we're going to go down one and across one, down one and across one for the slope. I'll just put in some dots here. I'll, now I'm not sure if I like the light green, so let's, let's do some blue dots. There we go. And we'll connect the dots. And I don't have a very straight hand here. Okay. There is, y, there is y equals negative x plus 5. Now let's graph the other one. We'll do that one in red. So this one we're doing in blue. There's our little legend. And over here we're going to do this one in red. So start at the y-intercept, which is 3. Put your point. And then the slope is negative 2 over 1. So that means go down 2 and across 1. The slope's a little bit steeper here. I'm going to keep that pattern going. Like so. And I'm going to connect the dots. Okay. And we're almost done here. All we have to do now is say, where do these two points meet? Where do these two lines meet? And it is this spot right there. This is the spot where they meet. You can use Desmos to do this. I have another video on how to do this graphically. So I won't spend too much time on this, but where the points meet is our answer. So the points meet at negative 2 when x is negative 2 and when y is 7. So that is the solution for this system of equations. These these linear equations, which are straight lines. Now, I know my lines aren't very straight, but <laughs> in fact, the blue line that I drew is so bad, it really doesn't look like it's even going through here, but it, it should have. It's just I, I squiggled here. <laughs> okay, so remember, x is negative 2, and y is 7. And let's see if we get those same answers when we do it using elimination and substitution. Let's move to the next page. And I will, uh, once again, I'm going to do elimination. So what you do is you start by writing one over top of the other, just like so. And make sure, make sure that you have x and y on the same side as the equal sign. In this case, they are already. OK, so make sure things are lined up one above the other. 
And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to use something called elimination. What that means is we can multiply either this equation or this equation, or we could multiply both of the equations by a number of our choice so that we can eliminate one of these variables, either the x or the y. For example, we could multiply this top equation right here by negative 2. And if we did that, if we multiplied it by negative 2, we'd get negative 2x, negative 2y, and negative 2 times 5 would be negative 10. And then you would see that the negative 2x and the 2x, they would cancel, okay, they would cancel. The negative 2y and the positive y would be negative y, and negative 10 and 3 would be negative 7, so y would equal to 7. Does that look familiar? Does that 7 look familiar? There it is. See, y was 7 over here when we solved it. So that's one way of solving things uh, graphically, or sorry, gra using elimination. Um, let's try one other way just so you can get the hint, the, the hang of this. Um, what if we multiplied this top equation, or let's say the bottom one this time. Let's multiply this whole bottom one. Each one of these terms let's multiply by negative 1. That would make this negative 2x, that would make this negative y, and that would make this negative 3. Now, x minus 2x is equal to negative x. A positive y and a negative y cancel, so they are gone. It is eliminated. I wish I had an echo on this microphone. I could make it sound a lot more cool. You have been eliminated, eliminated, eliminated. And then we have 5 and negative 3. 5 minus 3, well, we know that is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. And we don't want negative x equals something. We want x equals something. To, so to get rid of anything in front of x, just divide both sides by negative 1. That, that makes this positive. x is now negative 2. And let's look. Is that familiar? It is. Look it. We had a negative 2 here when we solved it graphically. So elimination works pretty quickly if you get the hang of how to do it. So x was negative 2, but how would we come up with what y is? All we'd have to do is put the negative 2, or substitute the negative 2 into either this equation or this equation. Okay, so let's do that. Instead of x plus, 5, x plus y equals 5, instead of x, I'm going to put the negative 2 there and say plus y equals 5. All we have to do now is bring the negative 2 over to the other side, which means adding 2 to this side, and you get 7. And look at that. Your answer ends up being negative 2 and 7. We have just solved it by elimination. What if we had taken the negative 2 and put it into or substituted it into this equation? Well, let's try that. And I'll do it in a different color, in red. Let's try it. You get 2, and instead of x, we're going to put a negative 2. See, there was an x there. I'm putting a negative 2 instead of an x. Plus y equals 3. Ne 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus y equals 3. Okay? And let's bring the 4 over to the other side. So add 4 to this side. That cancels. Add 4 to this side, and that adds up to become x equals 7. No matter which equation you choose, when you substitute it back in, you end up getting a 7 for y, and we end up getting the answer we were looking for. Okay? So that is the basics about how you would use elimination to solve this situation. The last way that you should know in your math class, and your teacher will probably want you to know, is how to use substitution. Some, sometimes substitution is the quickest way. What you do with substitution is you take whichever equation you want, whichever one you find easier, and solve for one of the variables. In this case, like I'll do it a couple times just so you get used to it, because this is my last question. I'm not going to make more questions after this. This video will be somewhat short. I'm going to solve for y here. So y would equal, um, I'll just say 5 minus 
x. I just brought the x over to the other side. I subtracted x from both sides. I ended up with this. I could have written them in a different order, but what we're going to do is take this 5 minus x and we're going to substitute it wherever we see y into the other equation. We're going to substitute it right there using brackets. Okay? So let's do that right now. So we have 2x plus and here is where we're going to put 5 minus x. So 5 minus x. Instead of y, we're putting 5 minus x, and that equals 3. Now, 2x, when you have a positive in front of brackets, you can get rid of the brackets. You don't need to do anything. It's like an invisible 1 is here, and if you multiplied it all out to by the 5 and the negative x, we're basically getting rid of the x, or the brackets. <laughs> there we go. Now let's put like terms together. 2x minus x is just x plus 5 equals 3. And the last step, bring the 5 over. So bring this 5 over, so subtract 5. That gets rid of it from there. So the answer is x equals negative 2. Surprise, surprise. Remember the negative 2? Well, that's what it was on the other questions. You can always go back and look if you want but it is true. Negative 2 was our answer. The other answer we're supposed to get for y is 7, and all we have to do is do what we did before. Take the negative 2 and put it into either this equation or this equation, and you will end up getting the answer. You could put it in this one really quickly, negative 2 plus y equals 5. Bring it over, you would get y equals 7. Okay, I just said that one quickly because what I'm going to do is I'll put it in this other one just because it's a little tougher. So we have um, Let's see, we have 2. Instead of x, we're going to write negative 2, because that's what we found was x was. And plus y equals 3. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus y equals 3. Bring the 4 over, add 4 to both sides. You end up getting y equals 7, which is exactly what we were hoping for. OK, so you can see that that is, that is what we call substitution. All right. Um, what if you substituted with this one? What if you happen to do it that way? Well, you would write it y equals, bring the 2x over, negative 2x plus 3. Then we would take this, and wherever we see y, we would write, instead of y, we would put negative 2x plus 3. So let's try that. You start with the x, and then we instead of y, we're going to put negative 2x plus 3 equals 5. And now we're just going to put like terms together. x minus 2x is negative x plus 3 equals 5. Negative x is equal to, bring the 3 over, it's equal to 2. To get rid of this negative, we already talked about that before, you would divide both sides by negative 1. So you end up getting x is negative 2. And then do the same thing. Take that negative 2 and sub it back in. So I'll sub it back into this equation right here. So instead of, I think we just did this a second ago, and negative 2 times negative, there's times 2 is negative 4 plus y equals 3. Bring the negative 4 over to the other side and you end up getting the 7. We've just been getting 7 negative 2 the whole time, which is great, because that is what it was when we did it this way. There it is, 7, negative 2, and that is what it was when we did it this way. We ended up with negative 2 and 7. So those are the three ways to solve a system of linear equations. Sometimes those equations can be more complicated than what you see here. This is just basic, uh, a basic situation. I'll also do some videos on real-life word problems where you have systems of equations with real-life word problems, where this method, or these methods, can be very useful for solving situations that are normally pretty complicated. Anyway, I hope that was helpful, and I hope you have the basics about what your teacher is talking about when they talk about graphing, elimination, and substitution as three different ways to solve a system of linear equations. Or a, or a linear system, however they're talking about it. Either way, I wish you well and good luck out there.